Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Healing Your Heart After Abuse, Rediscover Your True Self, Create Freedom, and Do Life on Your Own Terms, Women's Empowerment Series. I'm your host, Rhonda Sosby, and today my guest expert speaker is Susan Ball. And Susan, I'm so excited to have you here. Let me tell everyone about you. Susan is an abuse recovery expert, disruptor, I love that, I've got to find out more about that, lived experience speaker, and a best-selling author. Recovery after abuse blossomed from Susan's own abusive relationships and is built on the belief that all women are entitled to live free, fulfilled, and fearless. Susan is on a mission empowering women to rise up, show up, free their voices, and move from the victim space to the courageous and healing space. Welcome, Susan. I am so honored to have you here today. I am excited to be here, Rhonda. Thank you for having me. Yes, my pleasure. Um, so tell everybody about yourself. Well, I am the survivor of four abusive relationships, four. Oh, wow. And the last one, he tried to kill me. He strangled me and I ran for my life and so on and so forth. Um, but you know what? In, in that running for my life and, and somebody trying to kill you, I still missed him. I still longed for him. I was still pining for him. I was self-sabotaging with drugs and alcohol. I was feeling worthless and valueless and all of that stuff. And I lived in a furnace room of my friend's basement. Literally, the furnace was there and I had a cot and my two girls were on an air mattress. Mm. That's where we lived. Okay. And this one night I was I was, I was, was quite drunk. I, I don't hide from this uh, feeling sorry for myself drinking. And this little voice came in my head and it said, well, Susan, who's the common denominator in all your relationships? Mm-hmm. And I went, well, I hate you, little voice, and we're not going there. <laughs> we're going to continue to drink and numb you and dull you down. But it set things in motion. Not perfectly, not right away, but it kept coming back and it kept coming back. And as I looked at everything, I discovered that I was the common denominator and that the gaps that had been created in my worth worthiness as a child, the child wound, the worthiness wound, however you want to do that, had caused me to be um, so afraid of being abandoned. My wound was abandonment that anything would do. If someone said, I love you, it was like, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. I jump in. I don't care. I'm there. But it was that abandonment wound. It was that feeling of not belonging all my life of being unwanted that fed that fire continuously and I had to go back and and heal that in order and recognize it and deal with it and cry about it and do all of those things which I had not done I thought I was okay yeah you and I have so much in common I have the wound of abandonment also <laughs> And I've had multiple abusive relationships. So you and I have a lot in common. I can't wait to dig in to all of this with you. Um, so the topic that you and I are gonna talk about today is trusting yourself after abuse. Mm -hmm. And we talked just briefly before this recording and I can't wait to dive into this with you because it is so important. So go ahead and share your experience about trusting after abuse. The very first thing that I recognized was we have the trust thing wrong. We have it backwards. And as I was going through my healing journey, Rhonda, I did the same thing. How will I trust another guy? How will I trust this friend? How will I trust this relative, my sister, how will I do that? So I was put, I was again outside myself looking for validation for my own trust. Mm -hmm. When what I needed to do was learn to trust myself to make decisions, stand in my boundaries, live up to the standards I had set out for relationships. And as I like to say, hit the reject button right away and walk away. 
Yes. That's trusting yourself. If we're constantly looking for that, um, what would you call it? The solution as I got to learn to trust other people. You're still in that wound. You are still looking for outside validation. Yes. Yes. And let's talk about that. Outside validation is. Well, it's what we were looking for. We were looking for that sense of belonging. We were looking for somebody else to tell us we were worthy, worthwhile, lovable, um, good, uh, of value. Like, I want women to know they are of extreme value and they don't need someone else attached to that, to be that way. So we look for someone else. So we're sitting with someone and they say, hey, Susan, you're great. That's outside validation. And if we have a worthiness wound, we suck that up and go, oh, somebody thinks I'm great. Yes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fawn over them because they think I'm great. Yes, I love that fawn over them. Yes, you're accepted. You're, you feel accepted and you feel wanted and you feel loved all of a sudden because you get that outside validation. But that's not what we really need, is it? It has to come from in here. It is inside validation. And it's not easy to do, but it's mm -hmm. worthwhile. Worthwhile. And I think, you know, we live in a society or we have been conditioned as children, especially women. And this is something I speak out, out about a lot is the conditioning that girls get about being a good girl. Be a good girl. Don't be a bitch. Mm -hmm. We are conditioned right from the get-go, be nice, be good, be quiet, be this, be that. Don't dress like that. Dress like this. Hide yourself. It's a constant. <clears throat> and why are we told that? So that we can get outside validation from our mom, from our dad, from society, from a new boyfriend, from so on and so forth. So we're conditioned to look for that. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and that's absolutely because that's not what we need to be looking for. We need to be looking inside and know our own worth and our values. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Because when I was growing up, I grew I was growing up, I was a teenager in the in the the hottest part of the hippie era. Mm -hmm. So I had long hair and I, you know wanted to go to Woodstock and I loved Led Zeppelin and all of those things. And I can remember my family who were much older than me because I was, well, in some terms, a mistake and others, a surprise package from heaven. But however you look at it, I was totally unwanted and it was made very clear. <laughs> however, they tried to frame it. And I was constantly told, grow up, grow up. If you want to work in the corporate world, grow up, you can't have long hair, you can't wear a headband, you can't love daisies, whatever it was, I couldn't do it. And it was denied to me. And then I went to school and I thought, oh, you know, I want to go. <laughs> this is my lifelong dream. I wanted to be Diane Fossey and work with the gorillas. I admired her. I thought she was brilliant. Uh -huh. um, I, I just wanted to do that. This was, of course, just shortly before she got murdered. but. And I can remember everyone laughing at me, no one encouraging me, just laughing at me and saying, you know, be a good girl, go to secretarial school, be a good girl, join in, fit in, don't, don't upset the apple cart, as my mother always said, why are you upsetting the apple cart? But it was me trying to get out, this authentic person trying to say, I, this is, I don't want to be a secretary. <laughs> I want to be in the jungles of Africa, like people, hear me. Yes, yes. And you know what? A lot of times we, I love that you know, knew who you were and what you wanted to be and do. And there are nay naysayers that say, you know, that's not going to work and this is going to work. But here's the thing that I have learned throughout actually abusive relationships. I can create the life I want, you know? You can wear those hip huggers, you know, mm -hmm. the, 60s, the hip huggers and the daisies and the paisleys. And we can be who we want to be. We don't have to be what society tells us to be. And I think knowing who you are, because 
a lot of us don't know who we are at all. You know, we're not no. knowing who we are. Like you said, we're raised to be a good girl. Don't dress like this. You know, we're told all of our life what to do. But so it's normal. It is normal. It is normal. And here's the thing. At our age, we can decide what we want to do. We can decide who we want to be. We can learn how to trust our own decisions. You know, it's, a, it's actually, as yes, I'm sitting here talking to you, it's like a new learning curve. You know, we were it is. Up and raised by other people's values or guidance. And once you wake up and have that thought of this isn't who I want to be, this isn't what I want to do, this isn't, I don't want to be a secretary, you know. And we do have, we can make that choice. And that's, you know, that's what I call freedom is being able to make that choice of creating the life we want. And it's all about trusting our decisions as we go forward, right? Yep. And not looking for that outside validation because when I was a young woman growing up in the family, I wanted them to like me. So I started to do the status quo. If I become a secretary, they will like me. Mm -hmm. If I cut my hair, they will like me. If I do this, they will like me. That, that I wasn't thinking that out loud. Yes. But that was the abandonment wound. Yeah. The unconscious is saying, I've got to be liked or I'm going to be abandoned again. Yep. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, we have so much in common. Our lives parallel. <laughs> Um, but I love, the, I love the fact, Rhonda, that you use the word create, because one of the things that I express with all my clients and in my group is that you are given this gift after an abusive relationship to create whatever it is you want in this life. Yes, exactly. And so, imagine the possibilities, like just imagine the possibilities. Exactly. The possibilities are unlimited. I mean, we can mm -hmm. create whatever life we want. and. So was it the abuse that you experienced that got you to where you are today? The abuse recovery expert, was it that, is that how you found your calling and your gift? Yes. In, in a kind of a roundabout crooked way. <laughs> I, uh, I saw, I sought out counseling when I recognized that, you know, there was something something happening to me that was developing into all these abusive relationships. And I sought out counseling mm -hmm. and there was really not an awful lot of supportive push you forward type counseling. I was absolutely drowning in the word victim mm -hmm. and the counselors were keeping me there. Well, Susan, you are a victim of domestic violence. Well, Susan, you are a victim of this. Oh, Susan, you are. And it was just this victim, victim. So I stayed there and I stayed there and I kept wallowing and nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one day I met an old friend and she's, and I was telling her my story because I was, I had been conditioned now to wallow in my victim story, so to speak telling her my story. And she said, wow, Susan, that is such a friggin' boring story. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, how dare you challenge my victim, my victimness? Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, how dare you? You know, and I got, go ahead. I got very angry and I walked away. But mm -hmm. three days later, I phoned her and I said, what did you like? What, what did you mean? And it turned out she was, she was high up in the NLP training world. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that because I, I didn't care about her. I just wanted to tell my victim story, to be quite honest. Right, exactly. Anyway, she ended up gifting me my first NLP training to help me jump out of this victim thing. And I'll tell you, I was resistant. I will not lie to anyone who's listening. And she would always laugh at me and she'd say, there she is sitting like this. Oh, I want to be a victim. Don't you try and change that. <laughs> you know, that's part of the identity of, of being abandoned, having that abandonment wound and that identity or not trusting yourselves. I want to be the victim. I want to 
be poor pitiful me. I want to stay here. Yeah. But it's the change. It's you awakening. You, you mentioned that you, you kept having these thoughts or these feelings that this is not who I want to be. You know, I, I, at first you wanted to be in your victim story. You wanted to be that so you could get validation. So people would listen to you and you could get that outside validation. And then that awakening, I think that's your soul. I think that was your soul speaking to you. Susan, you were meant for more. You, you know, this is not who you want to be. You were meant for more. And I love how you stepped into that voice or that calling that you became awakened yourself and said, no more. This is not who I want to be. I don't want to be this victim. Yeah, I did. And, and that was, that was the turning point. And, you know, it's really hard for me to even go back there. Sometimes I'll joke around and I'll say, no, today I'm being a victim and everybody, and, and people will look at me and go, really? <laughs> <laughs> because once you have that sort of, uh, I don't know if you want to call it that enlightenment or that breakthrough moment, or you finally find your voice and you say, wow, I am who I am create myself to be whatever that is i have purpose to create something that i love being involved in and that's not to say it's easy that's not to say that you won't have hurdles along the way it's not to say that you might have a day where you just want to sit on the couch eat bonbons and cry yeah. that's okay too exactly. but all of it is part of this awakening inside now i mean i i can't live like diane Foss. no i'm my arthritis would kill me up there in the forest. So. <laughs> but I can give to the Mountain Gorilla Foundation. I can do those things to live that purpose again. So there is ways to um, transition, if you want to put it that way, back to that authentic person and find that love again. Yes, 100%. And, you know, my ex tried to suffocate me. He tried to kill me. And Ugh. it was that night that um, when he did that, I had that moment of waking up and realizing, well, the words that came out of my mouth were not the usual, I'm scared, I'm about to get the shit beat out of me, he just tried to kill me. I'd be screaming, I'd be yelling for help, you know, panic, shaking. But that night, the words that came out of my mouth, it was like someone took over. And I learned then that that's what the Holy Spirit is inside. You know, that was the Holy Spirit saying, I'm going to get you out of here. And that was an awakening for me or a new, a turning point. That was a turning point because I had never had that experience before where the words that came out of my mouth were compassionate and loving and it actually saved my life because I got I, I was able to get out of that situation but there's so much we experience through our growth of abuse recovery that we can we can find our purpose we can be there for that next woman we can be there and we've been through it we've overcome it we know you know and we can know what we're here to do every day and it, that's inspiring in itself knowing why you're here you know yes that's, that's inspiring because you get up every morning and you want to help people that's you know that's inspiring it gets you up it motivates you it drives you and i didn't want to yeah when i first when i first started out as a life coach after my nlp training and all of that i didn't want to touch that abuse part of it at all but everyone who contacted me had some sort of toxic it was like it was out in the vapors <laughs> i never spoke about it i never and then i thought there's a message in this 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 story of mine will help other women so i jumped in and that was also part of my recovery yeah. was jumping in and talking about it in a very open, honest way. Exactly. That is a huge part of recovery. When you can tell your story like that and be okay mm -hmm. with it and say, yep. this is who I am. This is who I was created to be. 
and I'm going to create the rest of my life to be the best of my life. Yes. And, and this is what happened to me. This is not who I am. Yes, exactly. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. But staying that in that victimhood would be staying in this is what's happened to me or this is who I am. But you chose yes. not to. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So you mentioned um, knowing your voice or let's see, um, free your voice in your work. You help women free their voice. Can you explain that a little more? Yes. And it and it is a powerful, is a powerful transition because as good girls as people pleasers, as the good doer, little doobie, as we used to have in romper room or whatever it was, yeah, being the doobie. The doobie. Um, yeah, we were that. We were hushed, hush, 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 hush. So it became very familiar and comfortable and a comfort zone for us to be in a position where somebody's telling us what to do or telling us what we're doing wrong or telling us not to do that or telling us how to behave. And we go, oh, okay, well, that's familiar. I'll just continue changing and morphing and doing as I'm told, mm -hmm. do as you're told. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, that good girl, do as you're told, closing down your voice is what will kill you and keep you from living your and creating your authentic life. Yes, absolutely. 100%. So it's freeing that voice to say, basically, if you want to do it that way, that's up to you. This is how I do it. And standing proudly in that, this is me. This is what I do. Yes. This is how I do it. This is when I do it. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> yes. That's freeing your voice. That's freeing your voice. I love that. Just being, stepping into and owning your authentic self. Yes. And being able to speak what you want to speak. Um, so tell everybody, what do you need to trust yourself? Because as we talked briefly before the interview, and you mentioned earlier, we have it all backwards. We have it, we, we think we need to learn how to trust other people. But how do we? What do we need to trust ourselves? What do we really need? We need a couple of things. We need our voice for one, but first we need to know what we want, what our, our needs, wants, and desires are as, as a woman, as the woman, as the sole owner of our life, we need to know our wants, needs, and desires. We need to be clear on that. We need to have clarity on that. We need to be going after them and challenging ourselves to go after them and putting that in place. When we develop our wants, needs, and desires, then we develop the boundaries and the standards for our relationships that protect those wants, needs, and desires. So if somebody comes along and they say to you, um, let's say you're young, you have decided as a woman you don't want children, and you're out on a date and somebody says, well, I want children. Okay, that's a reject button. Uh -huh. Because your wants, needs, and desires do not align with his right off the hop. Exactly. That's a boom. That's not thinking, oh, I can change his mind, or he'll see it my way, or we'll have so much fun traveling, he'll change his mind. No, that's minimizing, denying, and rationalizing the red flags and making excuses for not standing in your voice and saying, no, I do not want children moving on. That's what happens. It's that nobody can push you off your path. And you're looking for someone who can co-create life. So in a relationship there, and this is another one that we have to challenge our conditioning, your better half, your significant other, you complete me, a relationship is 50-50, all of those, they're, they're all BS, ladies, I'm telling ladies and gentlemen, whoever's listening, it's a BS. A relationship, when you are in a healthy relationship, you as an individual have a life, he as an individual has a life, and then you come together to co-create this sort of third life that you both enjoy. I love that. Whatever that may be. Yes. Yes. But nobody is competing to push the other one off their life's path. 
Right, right. And that that is finding the, that is when you can get to that point, that's waiting on finding that person that is right for you to where, you know, a lot of people say you complete me. Well, I'm complete without. Yeah, I'm whole. <laughs> yes. We, once we can decide that we're already complete, we can stop ignoring those red flags. And believe me, I've ignored red flags and I know you have to. <laughs> because like we think, oh, well, maybe I do want kids or maybe for him I'll have kids. No, if that's against your value, if that's against your boundary, that's an automatic no. And when we can get to that point of trusting ourselves, we don't have to look for that outside validation. Like, oh, he's giving me attention. Like I used to fall, anybody gave me attention. Oh, I was in. You know, <laughs> me too. <laughs> God, he's talking to me. <laughs> I was in. Oh, baby, I am good enough. Oh, he's talking to me. Yes. Uh, but then when we get to that point of the the recovery and the healing, we have the ability to say, no, you are not for me. And to me, that is magic for me in my life's experience and probably yours too. That was a huge breakthrough to realize I get to choose the man based on my beliefs and my values and what I want in a man. Instead mm -hmm. of being, oh my gosh, he wants me. You know, and that's something I really like pointing out and want to point out to everybody. When you can get to the point to where you're able to say, you're not the right person for me, that is a breakthrough. That is magical. You know, yeah. you're not looking for, you're no longer feeling I'm desirable. You're, I mean, you're no longer, how do I say this? You're no longer attached to someone because, or attracted to someone because they give you attention. Because of that outside validation, you feel beautiful or you feel worthy. But when you can get to that point and say, this isn't going to work. You're not the right person for me. I wish you luck. That is a pivotal moment. That's when we can, that's when we start creating our life. You know, that's owning our voice. That is owning our voice in who we are. Absolutely. And for those who are listening, it can happen after the second or third date as well. It doesn't have to be just the first date. Exactly. You're exactly right. Actually, this past year, I dated a guy for a couple of months and it took a couple of months for me to realize he's not the one for me. You know, this, I mean, it was all great in first, first, first month, second, third month. It was like, he's controlling me. And yep. I was able to realize that he's controlling. He's not the one for me. And I walked away. And walk away. Done. And that to me is not a failure. That is me trusting myself, me trusting my voice, and me understanding who I want, who I want to spend the rest of my life with, or what, you know, the type of person I want to spend the rest of my life with. And being able to just trust myself and say, no, this is a this isn't the right person. It's not a failure. It's growth. It's because success. I used, I couldn't do that in the past. I couldn't say you're not the one for me. I couldn't say that. I, I was just attracted to whoever gave me attention. So, you know, the last guy who almost killed me, the red flags were so blazing, Rhonda, like so blazing. But by that point, I was so desperate for that relationship and someone to complete me and bring me happiness and all of this shizzle that this guy is supposed to do which they don't and then I just absolutely ignored things that were so obvious blatant <laughs> yes I've done that too many times and I know our listeners have too we all ignore those red flags yeah and Oh, it's sad. It really is sad. And to put myself back into that place, you know, I knew 
I ignore those red flags. They were there. But yes, learning to trust yourself and value yourself and create the life you want is, is what we want all of the listeners to hear and understand and know that you can. You can choose the man. You don't have to wait for him to choose you. You can trust yourself. You don't have to worry about trusting others. This is your life. This is your life to create. And just because we were all abused doesn't mean we're damaged. We're all normal. We're perfect the way we are, exactly the way we are. But there are a lot of learning techniques and skills that we need to master after being abused. I think there's a lot of healing that needs to be done after being with an abuser. And like I said, it's not, it's not done in a day. It takes time. But once you hit that awakening or that have that soul tell you, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. This is not me. This is not who I am. Then you're learning to trust yourself. And, and just one other thing I want to add to this is one of the, the other key learnings of getting to that trusting yourself is being honest with yourself, is actually sitting back and saying, yep, I ignored that red flag. I did that. <laughs> yes the count and then you can explore why you did that <laughs> exactly and being honest with yourself 100 percent. if you're lying to yourself you're lying to your future you know yes oh i love that lying to you it's so true though it is it is and we live a fake life because we're lying to ourselves and we're lying to everything in our future so this has been great Thank you for sharing all your knowledge and wisdom with everybody. It was my honor to interview you. I have loved this conversation. I love that we talked about trusting yourself and owning your voice and just being who you are, creating who you want to, to be, creating the life you want. And Susan, you have a free gift for everybody. Would you tell us about the gift? Yes, I have 12 action steps to break the cycle it's a free ebook it has 12 things one of them about being honest uh -huh. <laughs> owning your story ladies own it <laughs> that you know doesn't mean you have to be shamed by it just own it and uh, the importance of going no contact and a few other things to do to actually break the cycle break the top trauma bond oh i love that that sounds good i can't wait to get my copy <laughs> <laughs> Susan, thank you for your time today. Thank you for giving everybody your time. Thank you for being my guest expert today. And thank you for just really the work you do and the mission you're on. And together, we all as sisters can make a difference in the world. We can. We so, can. Thank you for having me, Rhonda. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.